everyone, it's Emily. Last week, I talked about finding inspiration, so it's the perfect segue into talking about how to create a mood board, which for me is a key part in designing a collection in fashion. So I wanna share with you my tips from my personal process so you can see how ideas and designs are generated from mood boards. The purpose of making a mood board, at least for me, is to evaluate how my ideas are working together. And I really love this part of the process because you really get to work your creative muscles. Everyone can be creative. It's all about practice and unlocking that um, skill by practicing um, things like making mood boards or going out in nature and taking a walk or just being bored and letting your mind wander. So if you don't know where to start, one thing you can do is create an idea map. So you list ideas that you find attractive or fascinating, and from those ideas, list what it means to you, or it could just be what pops in your head. It's sort of like a stream of consciousness. So don't censor yourself, just let the ideas flow. So this is an example of an idea map. Um, so basically, I just started with a bunch of main ideas, like mood, family, religion, culture, and then whatever came to my mind, based on those subjects I just recorded. So um, could be presidential style or religion. I thought of Catholicism and beautiful churches. Um, I thought of mood and how fall and Christmas are coming. So lots of warmth. The next step or... is to translate your ideas into visuals. So for example, if you wrote down decaying as an idea, you might want to find images of lots of neutral colors and think about utilizing raw seams to show deconstruction in your designs. So I encourage you to spend time on ideas that might not be conventionally beautiful. Something you consider ugly could be incredibly enlightening. Subtle imperfection and real life images are what will resonate with you more deeply. Now I usually go online and start looking at images that inspire me and fit with the mood. Um, that I want to create. So you can use free online images from sites like Unsplash or Burst. My favorite thing is Pinterest. It's very smart and will catch on to the mood that you're creating. For example, if you pin a lot of neutrals, it shows you more neutral photography. The platform is basically one big mood board. Color is very much connected to your emotions. I think it's a good place to start if you're unsure. So you can focus on certain images with contrasting colors or color similarities. You can think about how you would tell a story with color. Um, I wouldn't limit yourself to a certain type of image. We can find beauty not in things themselves, but in patterns, textures, light and shadows, or contrasting colors. A mood board should almost be like a sensory experience for the audience and for yourself. There's a quote from Aristotle that I want to share because I think it really applies to the process of making a mood board. It's that the senses are the gateway to intelligence. There is nothing in the intelligence which does not first pass through the senses. So he's referring to the perception of recruiting all your senses and the impression they have on the body and how that shapes and informs a person's interactions with the world. And I really encourage you to keep this in mind while collecting images. Texture, for example, gives a third dimension to things. It's very alive, but also very abstract. Most textures can't be described using words, making them perfect to create a sensory experience with a mood board. You have varied textures, dimensions, shapes. Some people like very collage mood boards. I think it's more impactful to choose five to seven strong images. So this is an example of how I took images and made little notes and sketches. Um, you might notice there's lots of colors and textures and shapes. Um, and I even started collaging outfits and sketching onto um, little figures to start developing my ideas. Um, this is not a final mood board, but it's the start of um, gathering ideas and creating, um, just running the imagination, letting it go, and letting those ideas flow onto paper in a more visual way than what the idea map did. You'll also notice I included lots of different types of fabrics and you can even experiment with um, burning fabrics or manipulating them. Um, you can really explore your own creativity. So after going through your process book, you can take a step back and see what is consistent. 
Once you make that conclusion, you can summarize it in five to seven images. It's really good practice to observe shape similarities and color connections and seeing shapes and colors without thinking about what they actually are and just looking at the lines or just looking at the colors and it's very freeing for your creative mind. You can also start thinking about composition, which image goes where, what will make the mood board the most impactful. Composition guides the eyes toward what you perceive as the most important part of your mood board. It transforms ordinary objects and what was previously dull to more thought-provoking art. So I would suggest ordering things and seeing how they relate to each other, just switching things around. You can really experiment and train your eye to focus on different colors, lines, and shapes. And this gives the images relevance and awakens fresh connections. So here's a peek at one of my mood boards. I designed a wedding dress collection. So this is just an example of how I used art, different textures, photography. Um, you can sort of get a mood from the objects, a very romantic, um, sophisticated, very chic, but classic sort of aesthetic. That's what I was going for. Here you can see this is based on Baroque, the time period. So very grand, ornate, lots of gold, um, very large buildings and churches and dramatic art. Remember, it doesn't matter the difference between brilliant and average minds. Everyone is creative and through practice, like making a mood board, you can enhance the side of your brain. So if you guys want to see an example of a style that came out of my own mood board, you can like this video and give me a comment below and I'll be happy to make a video and show you garments that have come from a mood board. So don't forget to subscribe. I'm wearing the Maryland top from the Emily Westenberger Fall 2020 collection. You guys can check that out at www.emilywestenberger.com. All my social links are in the description, so feel free to give me a follow. Thanks. What to watch next, you may ask? If you haven't seen my video on where inspiration comes from, you can click the link in my description and stay tuned for next week's video on sketching. Thanks guys.